and welcome to Sports Life Talk South Dresses and Salted Pretzels with our host, Ms. El Paso. Buenos dias, buenas noches. And this is episode 73, Don't Call It a Comeback. I've been here for years. Yes. <laughs> I got <laughs> I have more bars. Well, isn't it? Um, okay, I'm the one who came up with the title, and isn't it from Mama L- said you okay. out? Yeah, it's L Cool J. Yeah, ladies love Cool J. I, I do. do. <laughs> I we both said it. The man does not age. No, no. he no. man. Every time he comes out, although I will say, without his hat. Uh, it's just a little different. It's a little different. <laughs> with what? What would you say? With, without his hat on. Oh, yeah. It's like, e. Mm. Not so much. I mean, so, of accessories. Yes. And hats. And hats. And pantsuits. And dresses. And pretzels. Okay. Then action. What do we got for our fact check, Ms. El Paso? Are we already going to fact check? We're not going to talk about what we're drinking or anything? Like, she didn't want to, she has, she's just so ready to fact check. I'm like, she's ready for fact check. No, we got to talk about what we're drinking tonight. (laughs) Our opinion check, actually, on this one. (laughs) All right. What are we drinking tonight? I, I am still floating from this weekend and yesterday. So I am. Drinking the Lord's nectar. Same. Jesus water. And I have nothing in front of me. So I'm drinking nothing but air. Uh, Okay, so Elena, why are you drinking the nectars of Jesus juice? What happened? Swallowing air is a great (laughs) diet plan. It's a what? It's a great diet plan. Oh. Lettuce and air. (laughs) Maybe a little droplets of water out of your lettuce. Well, um, lettuce. And die. Well, next week, next week, I will have a drink in hand because it'll be officially the end of Lent on Sunday. So oh, one more week. I'm excited for you. Thanks. Not even a week. Not even a week. Not even a week. Just six more days. All right, Lena, why are you drinking water? What happened? There were a lot of people in town Mm -hmm. and tons of music events, tons of sporting events this weekend. I went to the Astros on Saturday and got to witness for myself the speed of play, which definitely was much faster. I think they're averaging like two hours and 50 minutes or two hours and 45 minutes now instead of three hours and 11 minutes. Let me tell you what. I don't do math, but whatever that equates to really helped. And there were 20 opening day. There were 21 stolen bases, which hasn't happened since like, you know, 1907. Wow. Is that a real fact or was that a a thrown out there fact? No, that's a real fact. Okay. And if if it's not, can the baseball player will let us know. (laughs) (laughs) Let us know real quick. Yes. And then I went to the men's Final Four championship last night. Yes. And how was the that? best part of that? Uh, the best part of the men's Final Four championship was the fact that Bill Murray was there wearing a Cubs hat. Oh, look at him representing all the time. Yeah, he's wearing that Cubs hat that's in the picture. Does right he there. ever wear a different Cubs hat? Because I feel like he's always in the same Cubs hat. I think it's always the same one. I wonder how many years he's had that hat. But I wonder if he has like multiple of the same one or if it's just one. I would, he's, he's from Chicago. I would assume just one. I'm I feel like it's just one because Bill Murray seems like a pretty thrifty guy. And so yeah. I don't think he's spending a ton of money on baseball hats. No. I and he probably so. has like a favorite one, right? That's like, it fits him just perfectly. He's like, don't fuck it up. This is yeah. yeah, like that one. He's everybody's favorite uncle, Uncle Bill. So Uncle Bill wears his favorite hat. <laughs> and Brittany, why are you not drinking tonight? I just don't feel good. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hope that Brittany feels better uh, than 
well, let's just hope Brittany feels better because yeah. these people feel good all the time. It's time for fact check against the glass. And today's rendition is the best dressed coaches ever. So who wants to start? I want to go last. Okay. <laughs> okay I Wait, she, wanted, she wanted to cut straight to it, but then she wants to be the last one to talk about it. Hold. Because Soldier on the six is on the chat, and we have not seen him in like the past five episodes. Rude. Oh, I'm so glad he's back, though. I was worried. Soldier, I was trying to find your Instagram handle to be like, hey, are you okay? We miss you. And I couldn't find it. So please put it up on the comments or, uh -oh. hit, us up in our, or hit us up in our DMs, baby. Slide um, on in. Yeah, slide on into the DMs. We want to talk to you. All right, well, I'm going to go first. And now that Soldier's here, he's going to be really happy with the person I chose. It's Chuck Knoll. And the reason why I picked him is, and he's a Raiders coach. Uh, he was a Raiders coach. I picked him because his look was just simplified. I'm all about like the Chanel look, like just clean lines, nothing over the top, just super classic. So he was adept to picking out sweaters and impeccable starched collars as he was selecting talented players. Noel is responsible for the Pittsburgh Steelers steel curtain defense and the Steelers 1974 draft class in which they selected the four future Hall of Famers. But if, oh no, that was the wrong one. Shit. Sorry. <laughs> His name, I knew I was like, this isn't right. Tom Flores. It's a totally different person. Yes, okay, but question, does Tom, what's up, Cool Kev? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited all these Raiders fans are on the chat. And they're, they're actually like, it's it's a it's almost the same outfit. Look, that's Chuck. And who okay. I wanted to talk about is, is um Tom Flores. Almost the same outfit. So Tom still has starched collars. That's all that matters. Yeah, look so at the size much. of that lapel. Same guy. I love the lapel. He he mostly wore black ensemble. And here's a part enhanced by some retro um, white Nikes. Done. Oh, so he's not doing dirty business then, if he's got the white Nikes on. Yeah. Well, it's or the black Nikes. Or he's singing the song "Wipe Me Down." One or the other. All right, Brittany, your turn. I have to go with my man. Jim Trestle <laughs> in the sweater vest. Long live the sweater vest. Okay. He was just great. So, anyways, you don't know who he is. <laughs> he was the coach at Ohio State, but he also coached at Youngstown State and for the Colts for a little bit or on, like, consulting side. But he always had on – he was a businessman, Right. And he wore his sweater vest. Long live the sweater vest. Wow. I'll wear one one day when I find it. I have it somewhere, but I couldn't find it. Actually, I probably could have, but I didn't feel like looking because I feel like shit. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, you know, Cool Kev, speaking of sweater vests, I wanted to pick the Ditka, the coach. But 2023 is all about... Women's college basketball coaches showing the F up. Yes. And it is a runway show. I had a three-way tie, but of course there's always a tiebreaker. So I do have a winner for you. But the first honorable mention that does not go quietly is Kim Mulkey, LSU with her insane outfits that are as loud as her personality. Yeah. Kim, you're wild. You're my spirit animal. I hope to meet you one day. <laughs> Freaking love you. I feel like you will meet her. And when you meet her, you guys are going to become like instant friends. I just hope she sings All My Exes Live in Texas again for me. That was classic. That was just epic. And, you know, guys on the chat, please send me any Kim Mulkey video and I will repost it because she's going to be forever living in our stories for the rest of the year. Um, and then second runner up would be Miss Sydney Carter. The Texas she was on my list. Women's she coach. Was on my list. With 888,000 Instagram followers. Primarily, not only, I mean, she played in the WNBA, but primarily because of her outfits and her fashion sense. 
She is the only women's coach that can make a Canadian tuxedo look good. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you, you know that she was drafted by the Chicago Star Sky. Sky. Yes. Yeah. She played for the Sky. And she also played at Texas. So it's pretty cool that she's back coaching at her alma mater. Texas Makes A&M. Google. Oh, she went to A&M. Sorry. You're right. Yeah. But she's she coached coaching. at Texas A&M. And then she's and then does, coached at Texas. She's not coaching at Texas. She's like a director of player relations or something. Oh yeah. Well, I fucked that up. That's okay. But, I was here to help. It can't be as bad as often. I can't. <laughs> no, thank goodness. Uh, it's not as bad as me reading the Steelers coaches' best <laughs> fashion. When I was really trying to say the Raiders. <laughs> Yeah, I cannot be the most put together one on the show tonight, ladies. Okay, I'm I'm tired. No, no <laughs> lie, I'm first ever, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Brittany first ever. Fact checks. <laughs> let's oh, right. let's do, let's do a new segment. Brittany corrects fact checks. Um, this is it. It's all it live. Good <laughs> and um, Brittany corrects fact checks. <laughs> That's. <laughs> I wanted her to play at Texas. I prefer Texas over Texas A&M. So that's where that came from. Uh, but the winner, and this goes back to Ms. El Paso's comment in regards to the classic look, the Chanel, is Nelly Ivy, the women's coach of Notre Dame, ACC women's basketball coach of the year. And she's got a measly 83,000 followers on Instagram. But she's got those beautiful silk suits. Everything always matches. It's always classic. And she is my winner for the best dress coach of the I year. Dress best dress coach of the year. I need to look her up. Me yeah. too. I don't know who she is. But uh, since we're talking, you actually yes. commented because I shared on our story a picture of her in her all purple suit. And you were like, oh. that suit is fire. That's yes. her. Okay. Okay. Yes. I, I need that suit. She has like a silk suit in every color. She's got like a beautiful green one. She's got the purple. Anyway, those those right, are my well, three best dress. But with with the winner, of course, Notre Dame taking it home, baby. Taking it home, and let's talk about the final four women and men's basketball extravaganza that happened this weekend. And let me just say for the fact, and this is actually let me put this out there: question of the day. Are you now doubling down that women's basketball is is now like is it here to stay or will it be gone tomorrow after this championship? It is here to stay. 9.9 9 million viewers for the championship game. The most viewers out of any women's basketball game ever and also one of the top viewers of any sporting event in general. 9.9 9 million it's not the top, but it's getting up there. So, yeah, I'd say we're here to stay. And I only double down if Eric tells me to. Brilliant. Brilliant, Ken, the baseball traveler. Um, but, yeah, Cool Kev says, ladies, bring in the fashion. Thank you. Absolutely, Cool Kev. I'm going to start stealing some of these women's coaches' outfits. Um, yeah. But I was so hyped for this women's finals. Uh, this was the trash talking final of the century. You had LSU's Angel Reese versus Iowa's Caitlin Clark. Iowa, oh my gosh, it's been, it was their first final four in like 40 years, 30 years, I believe. And everybody was ready. It was fast paced game. It's one of the fast paced yeah. games I've ever seen the ladies play and exciting all the way through all both teams. Starters got into foul trouble right from the beginning. Kaylin Clark had two offensive fouls in the first half, got set on the bench. LSU's bench came out strong, knocking down threes. Um, I don't remember the player's name, but she had five threes in a row, just pop, pop, pop. And, I mean, I was in. I did not move from the couch. I watched that at home, and I watched the entire game. It was an extremely high-scoring game, tons of fun. I mean, yeah. So here okay. for this. So I have the opposite thought. I don't think it's here to stay if they don't get the right PR to push them through. It's almost like that Facebook 
account that if you don't keep posting and you don't keep it track, don't don't keep traction, it's just gonna kind of go away and everybody forgets about it. And the reason I say that is because it, and I, I'm gonna take it all the way back. Angela Reese, she did all of this, right? It is now huge. It's controversy, you know, going around about like, was it disrespectful? Yeah, I'm boring. Was it disrespectful? Was it not disrespectful? I think not at all. It was not disrespectful. But no. what was disrespectful was First Lady Biden saying that we need to invite Iowa and LSU to the White House because, you know, it's like, oh, let's celebrate all the ladies, you know, that, that made it to the championship. No! Oh, no. exactly. <laughs> Hell to the no. You wouldn't For do sure. that. LeBron would not be like, yeah, let's go ahead and invite Draymond Green up here because he was, you know, he kind of made it. No, this is no. The, what I loved about this woman's basketball team, LSU, Iowa, and I mean, the whole tournament, what I loved about it, it was not your typical women's basketball games that were occurring. The trash talking, the aggressiveness. It wasn't, it wasn't the kumbaya thought that I had for ba women's basketball. Kev had asked us a long time ago, do you like women's basketball? I said, no, I prefer not to watch it. Now I do want to watch it only if it comes with this entertainment. If it doesn't, yes. I'm going to be back to not watching it. I got to disagree a little bit because you played women's basketball, right, Ms. El Paso? Yes. At a young, younger years. Yes. Brittany and I played women's basketball in our younger years. And I thought shit. There was so much shit talking, pinching when you're on the foul line for the free throws like you'd sit there and you'd pinch the girl next to you Lots the only time elbows. I actually got to play was to foul the coach would be like all right Steinman get in there and foul her <laughs> like I think the females have always been super aggressive I think that they're just getting more tv time more accolades the players are better I mean they're way better than when we could even thought and dreamt about playing basketball Ooh, are you saying that about Lisa Leslie? Yeah. Woo! Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, I mean, when you look at the spread of players across, like, yeah, there's always been goats in women's basketball. I'm not saying Lisa Leslie is not fucking amazing, but the amount of players and the level that, and the skill set that they play at today, and that's with any sport, men's or women's, we were talking about that all weekend. Like, the women's, we were talking about swimming and women's swimming are now beating men's Olympic records. Now the men are still faster than the women, but women today, these kids are just built differently. Like, I don't know. Are they all corn fed? What's going on? Like, are we pumping these well, people up with steroids? We've evolved as a human race in sports. <laughs> I think too, though, like kids get involved in a sport really early on. And then the parents drive that home where like when I was a kid, I, I was put in whatever sports played everything to play. And it, it wasn't until I got a little bit older and I developed like what I love to do that my parents put me in like the year round program for it. You know what I mean? Like I did a sport every season and multiple sports every season. And it wasn't until you know, I found what I really liked that that's where they like put everything. And now it's like, uh, oh, I played baseball. So you're going to play baseball kid and we're going to start you at two years old and you're going to work. You don't want to play too bad. Ah, you're playing. Well, I mean, yeah. you got the kids. I think that's a big part of it. You got, you got kids who are five years old getting trained by like ex, you know, players who were like big time players and they're going through, yeah. tra they're going through training that I would probably go through as an adult, just trying to lose weight. And yeah. it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Especially in Texas. And Brittany, I completely agree with you. We played every sport as kids. Like, literally, you played year-round sports. You're in yeah. basketball, you're in softball, you're in volleyball, you're in golf, you're in track. My mom made me run track and cross country, and all I did was walk. The <laughs> and made me act like I was throwing a shot put. And she's like, I don't care, you're you're doing cross country and because it was free babysitting. Yeah, now, exactly. Now the kids are like, no, here's your two sports and you better pick it quick because you're playing year round. So yeah. I agree with that. And they, and they dump so much money into these sports. And I'm like, why don't you dump that money into saving for a college or something or something else? Because 
not every kid's going to make it. No offense, but you have these parents that pay all this money for sports and then the kid gets in high school and they're burnt out. I'm like, well, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. yeah. Can't and agree. Right. I agree with him. All right. Let's move on real quickly to yeah. men's basketball. Uh, the F8 to me, I, I mean, I can't stop watching the replay. That FAU and San Diego State game, the last two minutes was just like, Oh my God. I mean, I can't, I can't even imagine one being on an FAU team and just seeing that happen in front of you. Like it just slipped in two seconds. And then also who makes the the points, like you are in your, you're in the book of history. Like that was just amazing. What are your thoughts? Well, I agree with the end of the game. Extremely exciting. I was jumping up and down, and that is the only time I got excited during the game because they both played terrible the first half and all the way into the second half until the very end. So I didn't think that either team showed up. I mean, I think San Diego State got in there at the end just based off of their sheer size and power, and then that's what they played on all year, which showed in the championship game because they didn't do ish in the championship game. No. Only right. two assists from San Diego State until like the last 12 minutes of the game. They only had two assists. They looked a hot mess in the championship game. Um, but you mentioned Angel Reese. Shout out to the family because her and her cousin, Jordan yeah. Hawkins, now have national titles. And it was UConn as a four seed. That's what was so crazy to me at this final four. Everybody, ticket prices, we talked about this last show. Ticket prices dropped. Nobody was going to the game. What did I send you guys? There was 70,000 people oh, there. Oh, yeah, 72,000, 72, which 70, is just as much as it's going to be. Yeah, I believe that, honestly, like people showed up just because tickets were cheap. And they're like, well, might as well, they're in Houston. Might as well go to the final four. Yeah, um, I would have gone if I lived in Houston, but I wasn't going to travel in to to watch that game. If it was cheap tickets, anyways. Fifth national championship for UConn. I just want it to be known that I did not pick UConn, but I did say when we asked who the, could be there, I did mention UConn being there. Did hey, Eric did Eric pick UConn to win? The, I don't know if he picked them to win, but the only person that picked three out of the four in the entire world was Eric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, as as Ken mentioned in his comment earlier, I'm only doing something if Eric tells me to do it. But. Yeah. Well, you know what I did just recently. So, um, just for some of the viewers out there, Eric won't be on tonight. Sorry. But we're seeing you have some really good thoughts out there. Send some good juju and good vibes to Eric. Um, but he, on his on his podcast last week, said that the Astros are not going to win the World Series, but he really feels that the Mariners might. So I put $10 on a, on a MLB future bet. For um, the Mariners to win, even though that's going to hurt my heart. What would the payoff be for that? Do you know? Um, it was like plus eighteen hundred, so I don't know what that means. I think that does that. Me either. <laughs> it's like hundred. I think it's a hundred dollars. Next Tuesday, we're just going to have Eric give an entire betting class. He's going <laughs> to hate us. He's on every show, and I still have no idea what he's talking about half the time. I told I told him that when we were um when we were at the draft that like he was gonna have to like walk me through how to use my phone to to like make bets and stuff and he was like I am not signed up for that disaster. So ten dollars can get me one hundred and eighty dollars and I am okay with that. Ooh, so That'd then be if, good. I put, if I put a hundred dollars, I can get eighteen hundred. I actually I, I don't want to bet that much. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, let's go into celebrity gossip. I only got one thing, and it's a Kardashian thing, which, I, you know, I hate having to announce this. But the reason why I'm saying it is because I'm devastated. Bad Bunny is dating Kylie Jenner. 
Like, what? I think Kendall. Or Kendall. Yeah, one of those. Who cares? They all look alike. But he's in, he drank the Kool-Aid and he's in there. And now I feel like he's ruined. Like, they ruin all the men that they date. It's <laughs> a wrap. So it was nice. It was nice knowing you, Bad Bunny. And I really enjoyed your music. And that's all I got for Celebrity Gossip. Never going to have a record ever again. <laughs> right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sing Titi Me Pronto ever again. Ever again. All right. Well, you know, it is my favorite holiday coming up. Mm -hmm. And what's my favorite holiday? It the is. Masters. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. The Masters is this weekend. And I'm so excited. And just in case anybody was wondering, live golfers are playing in the Masters. We'll let them play. Yes, no. I knew that would surprise Ms. El Paso. So how do you get into the Masters? You get into the Masters by winning a Masters, past champions, winning on the PGA Tour, and you have to be certain rank for so many years, so that's how some live players got in. Also by invite. Mm. So I just I wasn't to invited. To Yoda. Yoda. I just want to read you the list of live Sorry. players that are going to be playing in the Masters. It's Sergio Garcia, Patrick Reed, Dustin Johnson, Brooks Kepka, Bryson DeChambeau, and Phil Mickelson. And they will be going against Rory McElroy, Jason Day, Scotty Scheffler, John Ram, and Tiger Woods. So we have an all star studded lineup for this year's Masters. And it's live against PGA. And I cannot wait. wait okay. So when does it start? So it starts practice round start Thursday and then finals on Sunday. Okay, okay, so when so do, I watching, do I start watching? Do I start watching Friday or just your house on Sunday? You want to watch Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, is this going to be like trash talking too on the on the field? Generally, no, no. Oh. You do see some kinds of like with depending who's playing together, um, and if they get along, you can tell kind of, but not not really trash talking who do you think is gonna win it i think it's time for rory mcelroy and he is not my favorite player no he has been waiting on the masters to be able to complete his grand slam career so he's won all won all other major championships and so he needs this masters it's been like i feel like 14 years or something so oh uh, that's sad. That's it's going to be raining. Yeah, what is, so what happens when it rains? They still play, right? Not if there's lightning. Uh, you yeah, know, they're holding a metal metal stick, so. Yeah. <laughs> Swing it with a metal <laughs> stick up here. Um, yeah. All right. So you got, okay, so you said you, is there, a, don't we have like a an app or something where you can bet on these people too? Yes, there is a fantasy for Masters, just like there is for baseball um, or for the NCAA bracket and championship. And we do have a bet uh, going $20 buy-in with our group. And this one's really fun because you can actually switch out your players depending if they make uh, the finals or not. And so, like, you've got your one set of players. Um, and then depending if, if they make it or not, you can kind of, like, switch out your players. And I've – Actually, people don't realize you can do that. And so I've moved ahead a few times by switching out my players. So FanDuel has is it a fan Hopefully the people who are playing in your team are not watching for that tip. And I have not picked my team yet. I don't know when the teams go live. The teams aren't live yet. Okay. So uh, maybe, what's today, Tuesday? It's maybe... Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, I think the, the teams go live. So okay. Masters also, they don't allow phones. It's a classic, classic event. Um, you lock up your phone before you go in. The concessions are still extremely economically priced. Um, they froze them after like a certain year. So it's like a $2 Coke and, you know, $2 pimento cheese sandwich. But um, like $10,000 for a ticket. <laughs> 
All right, Elena, um, before we go to your player's anthem, is there anything happening this weekend that people need to know about or anything this week? My master's party. My master's party. <laughs> and I will be there in golf attire. And I'm, very, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, are we dressing up? Oh, I am. You want, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely dressing up. Are you and I think, I'm gonna have, I think I'm going to have the party at the place next door. Yes. That's going to be, I think that's, it's a good open, uh, opening day for you. Can yes. we move my chair over there? <laughs> well, you can just go over to the other house and sleep in it. So, okay, perfect. So, cool Kev, great question. I actually ordered, so a couple years ago, I made all of the food. So I did the egg salad sandwiches, the pimento cheese sandwiches and had the original lays and everything. And I had all, I made everything this year. I ordered the masters straight from the masters i ordered the whole spread so i'm getting the pimento cheese egg salad sandwiches and the pulled pork barbecue sent to me in the mail that is so cool yeah so that and it's got cool. you get all of the masters cups and it's the only place that you can get all the you know we're gonna have masters cups oh. plates, actual recipes not elena's recipe so oh then i definitely need to wear a golf attire done okay all right, what's your player's anthem? And then take us out. All right, my player's anthem is not only a shout out to both Final Four championships being in Texas, but it's specifically to LSU, and that is Bourbons and Lax. This is for, I love that song. When I was in high yeah. school, that was like yes, my everyday. Oh my God, song. Master P. But why? Not only because Master P is... Louisiana. Uh. <laughs> because he says hit interstate 10 to texas uh. <laughs> but that, that's my favorite line after i moved to texas that's my favorite line hit interstate 10 to texas i'm surprised master p wasn't here actually maybe he was and we just don't know he might have been and he's just like under the radar because people don't even know who he is anymore <laughs> these youngins all right take us out <laughs> all right everyone thank you so much for joining us this evening make sure you follow dresses and salted pretzels sports life talk and ms el paso on instagram and don't forget our dear friend eric from etof 21 sports he will not be having his show this evening um well i don't think he is anyway no, he has stars, but please send all the prayers and love to him and make sure you check out our homies on the chat because they've got podcasts. They've got Instagrams. So hit up Ken the Baseball Traveler, Cool Kev, and Soldier and check them out. And make sure you watch Sports Live Talk tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Central. Adios. Bye.